Hello, hello, hello. Hello, this is Darlene Thorne. How are you, Miss Darlene? Welcome. Thank you. Who else is out there? Hello, hello. Please state your name and where you're from. Hi, this is Clara from Southern California. Claire from Clara? All right, from Southern California. Awesome. If you guys want to chat live, you can also. This is Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Hi. How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Doing well. Blessed. I just finished uh, coming off of 72 hours of power. I saw, I'm sure you saw some of the posts. It was just phenomenal over there with Trevor and Shay. Well, I know you're excited. Let's get started. You ready? I am ready. I'm ready. We, we are ready to go. Um, we already have a couple people on the line, Darlene. And, and um, yes. you know, uh, hey, let's go for it. Let's go for it. If everybody can hit star six on your phone, that's going to mute you. A lot of fans will still get a chance to hear from us, and then at the end, we'll open up the call. Uh, Dwayne, I want to kick off with people and um, see a chance to know a little bit about yourself so you can kind of tell your story, um, and then we'll go into the topic for the evening. Sounds great. Uh, this is the book, No More Crumbs from the Table. I'm an author, speaker, trainer, and I found myself in a situation where I was trying to really help people uh, identify their own gift, talents, and abilities. And uh, over the years, I had worked with uh, a lot of at-risk populations, those that were incarcerated, uh, moms and dads who have been on welfare, second and third generations, breaking the cycle of dependency, helping people identify things that are true to them. And one of the things that happened, I started doing this workshop called No More Crumbs from the Table. And it comes from the biblical sense because there was a time when Jesus was with the disciples. And this lady, you know, her daughter was very vexed. She was having challenges. And she said, um, you know, to Jesus, hey, could you help me with this situation? And it was the first time I saw that he said no. And, and then she said, well, even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. And I started thinking, why would people want to wait for the crumbs? And then I identified the fact that there are a lot of people waiting for somebody to give them the okay to move forward. A lot of people are waiting for someone to pass away so they can get their inheritance. Or people have kind of went into a, a lifestyle that doesn't even tap into their own gift and ability and they go to the grave with their things still on the inside of them. So I started writing this uh, whole little program to help people cultivate their gift, talent, and ability was turned into No More Crumbs from the Table. And that was in 2004, I released it as a book, and then it's, I was traveling all over doing workshops. And recently, Leslie, um, I just knew that by being a business owner, I had to help people cultivate that heart, that love for business. See, you have something on the inside of you, and it has to come out no matter what. And if it doesn't come out, it's going to continue to eat at you. And a lot of people are getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready, and they're asking people for sanctioning of what it is that they want to do when they really should just go ahead and do something. So I met you over the internet and uh, recently we was down in North Carolina doing a presentation and uh, the result was you invited me to be part of this right here. So right now I'm ready to start talking about that cultivating. excited about having you on the call tonight and we definitely want to make sure that we can get some questions answered from our business owners that are on the call or the ones that are listening in as well as our general public that have been invited to the call tonight which you know this month is love and so we are encouraging business owners to love on one another um, and what exactly does that mean to you when you heard about the topic of this particular virtual trade show doing what uh, resonated with you the most as far as what happened to me is the fact that number one i saw so many people in the audience who had this desire for people to know what it is that they they had started you know um people get an idea and they wake up in the middle of the night and we talked about waking up between three o'clock in the morning with this idea to start something and a lot of people they'll they'll have this idea but they don't really know how to put it into a process or a system to allow the masses to participate so in that i saw that there were people in the audience who they love they got involved with but now they want to know how do i share my love how do i transfer love of business 
to others. So when I was sitting there and, and hearing about this particular event, I thought, you know, I can help people with the idea of cultivating. See, as a cultivator, there's a lot of different things that has to happen, especially their environment. So I figured that, you know, I could take some of the principles that are actually written in the book, No More Crumbs from the Table, and I could actually take some things out of here and glean to actually talk about this topic with those that have businesses and even those that are wanting to share their knowledge about their business. So the second part was, okay, you love your business and people know that you're in business or do they even know you're in business? What is it that you're doing to cultivate the love for others? Like, okay, are you adding value to them and their business? You want people to participate in your business, but what kind of value have you added? So in my position, I met you, I came down to add value to your event as a guest speaker. From that, now I'm participating in this trade show. So the love for business, just being in business, gave me the ability to get in my car and drive over five, almost six hours away to spend maybe 25 to 30 minutes to an hour to impart information to your audience, but then connect it with your audience and connect it with you in a way that now we're way in California. So the love of business, cultivating business, what it means to me is helping people really understand that if you're gonna do business, you wanna be the person who has a solution for people, but you have to cultivate how you value your business and the value that you bring to the marketplace. Absolutely. Lane, you and I both know that when you have your head down and you're working really, really hard and you're trying to figure things out for your own brand and, you know, you're taking a couple of opportunities to, like you said, so, um, you know, beyond your own borders to show love and show support of another business. You and I both know that there are times when you're one into business owners that just are not lovely to deal with. Um, what would you say is the best way that you have found in coping with business owners that you've ran into that just don't show you love? Yeah, okay. So <laughs> you have people that don't show you love. You have people who actually, they have their own agenda, but they're not interested in your agenda. So for me, what I've learned is that I have something so valuable that what they think about it and how they don't show love doesn't really matter to me. I know that what I'm going to do is connect with them at the best level possible. Even those that are difficult, even those that may not see the value in you, they could be connected to somebody else. So I can't totally discount them. I have to go through that storm. But I know that because I have something of value to bring to the table, that person is not the end, is not the end of it all. It could be that that person is the key to open the opportunity for something else. So I want to encourage those that are on the call, those that are hearing this, that you don't know what it is that can stir up somebody else that uh, is against you. I think of it of, uh, again as how sometimes you can have someone who is totally saying all the wrong things. They don't believe in you. They don't have no clue about what you want to do. But then they're at some water cooler somewhere talking to someone. And they go, oh, yeah, Leslie, she's doing that, that kind of business thing. You might want to talk to her. I don't know what she's doing. She's kind of out of her mind. And they walk off. And now that person still meets you. And you have an empowering moment. So I tell you, to, don't worry about those that are haters, those that are, don't see the value, those that want to be negative and they bring that negativity to the environment but don't hang on to them either because you don't want their mindset to get into your heart see it's a lot of times that people could talk about certain things and take you out of who you are or take you off your purpose including the people who are closest to you see when you go in business you have to know that this is you it is you against the world all right and even some people might be in your circle who just don't get it they don't see it but it's not maybe for them to see for you. You have to be the one to see for you because the, the, the main ingredient to anyone's success is you. Most people wanna look outside for their validation, but you have to be the one that validates yourself so you're empowered to still move regardless of the negativity that's coming from others. Yeah, absolutely. 
Dwayne, talk to me about some of your favorite pieces from the book. I want to kind of get into that a little bit. Why do you find that this would be a great resource for business owners that you have found um, in 2015? Do you feel as though your book is needed now? More I believe that, number one, there's a couple of principles that I talk about. I'm going to talk about the disputation. If you go into the back of the book and you get to page 151, there's a workbook. And inside the workbook, it tells you about setting up a positive argument. A lot of people will talk themselves out of things, but I teach you how to talk yourself into it. Because you might have an argument saying, you know, well, I want to make more money, but I don't have enough leads. All right. Okay. So the argument is, the reason why I got to shut my business down is because I'm not getting enough leads. So that's also going to be supported by your belief system. It's called the ABCs, okay, of a dispute, disputation. You want to dispute that fact, okay? Because, see, sometimes you can have a fact, but it's not the truth. And the truth is uncontrovertible. It is something that you can have all kind of things come against it, but at the end of it all, you still have that truth. So here you are, you want to dispute something that is causing you not to move forward. For me, it was my confidence. I had things going well. My life was in a real good place. Everything seemed to be moving. I was flying all over doing all these presentations, and then I lost my contract. I lost my contract with a university who was sending me out to do a lot of training and empowerment for people who had a mindset of dependency. And the next thing I know, I couldn't pay my rent. I couldn't pay my office space. But what I did was I moved out of my place into my office. And then I was in my office to the point that I'm still trying to get my contracts and nothing was coming through. And so I lost it all and wind up homeless. So that's the story that's in the book. And I, I misunderstood that challenge to mean maybe I did something wrong or this wasn't for me. And what I found in 2015, which actually started in 2014, was I was taught to go back to something that you had a passion for and brush it off, blow the smoke off it, blow the dust off it. So I went and I, I had it, it had a different cover, it had a different way it was looking, and I tried two different looks, and then I came up with this, this guy out here with his arms outstretched wide, and I said, okay, this guy looks like he's free. I want people to be free. So now, more times than ever, I want people to invite me to sit down across the table or into their group to talk about cultivating their heart so they can go after it hard for the business that they want. See, nobody's going to give it to you. It's not dropping out of heaven. No one's going to just come up to you and give you this thing. And I was sitting homeless trying to figure out, and then I was, this one particular night, there's this one spot where homeless people go that I actually went. And... I had this epiphany of heart and I called my sister and I called my sister and I told her, I said, you know, I've been doing workshops, trying to keep things together, keep things together. I'm on the road. You know, I was one of those people that had a homelessness, but they had a couch to go to or a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but you're still homeless. Okay. Cause you don't have your own key. And I tell the story in the book, but what happened was I talked talk to my sister and she said, Dwayne, just come home and start over. And that was in 2004. And in 2004 to now, I kind of did it a little bit, came back and forth, but anywhere I had to blow everything off and go after it. So what happened? Well, there'll be people who will be put in your pathway that's gonna help you move to your next level or your next dimension. And I had a word that I had about fragments. And I took that word which said, go get the fragments of what you've been doing or what you tried and do it again. So I want to encourage you, if you're trying to get leads for your business and you're trying to get people to participate, are you doing what everybody else is doing? You know, there's a book called Lead the Field, and it talks about some of the things. But in the last part of the disputation, it says, challenge your belief. So A was the argument. B was the belief. C is the challenge. So you want to challenge that belief that's stopping you from moving into your greatness. And so in this book, the reason why I think 2015 is so important right now, because we're living in a time of manifesting your dreams. We're living in a time where people need to shift their focus from a regular work economy to an empowerment economy. You know what's going on in the marketplace already. Even if you go in the marketplace with your degree, they want you to have a PhD to open up 
you know, the door and say, welcome to Walmart. They're not, it, it, it's that they are, the, the systems out there are saying, you know what, we have so many people coming out of college with degrees that now I don't need to really waste my time on a person who have a GED or high school diploma. I need the person with a BA or PhD and a master's degree. And sometimes, you know, recently I saw an article for a master's degree, open level, entry level position starting at $35,000. So it's a time now for people to tap into the gift, cultivate what's on the inside out, and then go out and share it with the world. You have things like this. I'm on Google Hangout right now. Uh, we got Facebook, Instagram, all kinds of social media uh, areas. You have your cell phone, your smartphone. You could take a company and it could be real simple. Hi, this is Dwayne Ross, and um, this is from DwayneRoss.com. I want you to go to DwayneRoss.com, and you say whatever it is. Of course, you got to figure that out. Put it on your little smartphone. You put it on a smartphone, and now you can put it on, up on YouTube and have it to thousands of people over in, in seconds. Whereas before, you had to have a production company and lights and cameras and all kind of different stuff. Now you can actually take this same thing that I'm doing right now. We could have a translate and translate it into a small PDF and now you have a download that you can send to your customers. So now you're generating leads that way. So the reason why no more crumbs from the table and this idea of disputation is so important right now is because in 2015, in order to manifest your dreams, you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to go at it and you have to take what's already on the inside of you and just go forth. And a lot of people say, well, how do you do that, Dwayne? How do you get what's on the imagination into manifestation? Well, there are some steps. We talk about smart goals, and that's great because goals, you have to have them written down, but now you have to have action steps attached to that goal that makes you, moves you to the next level. So even tonight, uh, I, I didn't hear everybody that's on the call, but I know there was a few people from all different places, and I want to know, and you, you should write this down. What's the one action you can take today, tonight, to do something that moves your business to the next dimension? And I'm not talking about something that gets you ready. I'm talking about a serious action. Is there somebody you can call right now? Is there a follow-up that you haven't made? Is there an email you haven't sent? Is there a text message? This is awesome. You can now take a text message and text, mess, text everybody and tell them, hey, come to this hangout, all right? So you have no excuse because you can do it passively. You don't have to be dealing with the rejection, all right? But in the disputation, if rejection is your issue, you can put that, you know what? The situation is, the argument is, people always reject my business proposition. B, that's the belief. My business is not good enough. C, what's the challenge? How can I challenge that belief and now put an action step in, in a small, smart goal that moves you to the next level? There's a thing called baby steps. A lot of people want to take giant leaps. If you have a problem with the giant leap, take a baby step. But here's the thing. If you take a baby step or a giant leap, you're moving forward. But if you're doing the same old thing that you've always been doing and you're not getting any results, more than likely, you need a new action plan. And so I'm here to help you with the action plan. You can go to my Facebook page and go ahead and make a comment. That is I am Ross.com. Excuse me, Dwayne Ross. And that's D-W-A-Y-N-E-R-O-S-S. -S. Go to I am D-W-A-Y-N-E-R-O-S-S -S and put some information there. Comment on this conversation that we're having. Also, if you are um, at the uh, virtual trade show go in there and start putting in some i want you to tell Leslie and i what's one major step that you're going to take as a result of listening to this message awesome good stuff you still there Dwayne? yeah i'm still here i'm waiting i know you have some questions for me so we i like the idea that you asked me a question that allows me to kind of expand so that's even better Absolutely, and I want to make sure that you get all your notes because I know every, all of my speakers tonight have 
taking some notes and, and want to make sure they hit on some key topics. Um, what have you witnessed within your business um, is the greatest need for small business owners right now and trying to make sure that they're loving your business and that they want to stick with it? All right. The greatest need that I have identified for the people that I've connected to is a belief in themselves so they can love their business. Somebody probably told you that, hey, you're really good at this, but do you really believe it? Or you looked at some brochure and decided, hey, I'm going to start this business over here. But is it truly in line with who you are? Is it unique to your gifts, talents, and ability? Because see, what happens is you start something and you don't see the results that you expected. And then within a short period of time, you're starting something else. I think a lot of people are scattered. And what I want to encourage you to do is do what I did. I had to come to a place where I said, okay, I put everything that I'm doing out there on the interspace or the interweb. And I said, what is it that I need to brand? Who am I? And then I realized I was branding all this other stuff and I needed to brand myself, Dwayne Ross. And then if they get me, they get everything that's attached to me. So I want to encourage people to take some time and love themselves by identifying the, in, the inward man. What is it about you that makes this the business for you? And if you've already determined that this is the business for you, what is the number one why that drives you to stay in it? Because see, you, you got to give yourself a no turn back attitude. You got to create a no turn back attitude. You need a coach. You need someone that's in your corner telling you, come on, Rock, you can do it. Because, see, if you don't have a coach during the, the real hard times, you're going to go back to what you already know. And if you know you need to make one or two more phone calls, make four or five. So look at your law of averages. Jim Rohn talked about the law of averages. There's safety in numbers, Sinaloa. Safety in numbers, the law of averages. When you're cultivating the, 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 the heart, you're going to look at those law of averages and stuff that you've tried and started that you never finished. And then X out everything you have no passion for, get rid of it. There was a cool idea, but it wasn't what you really need to do. So I want to encourage the, um, the people that are listening on this call to focus. I call it shift your focus. As a matter of book where I talk about, it's time for you to shift your focus. Make that mental shift that keeps you connected to why you started in the first place. Because some people lose themselves as they go. Now, another part of what I have is my wife and I, we actually have a hair salon. And in that hair salon, that was just an imagination. It was just a message that was heard, written down on some paper, and then we thought about it and came up with a plan. And then from there, we had to go through the social proof of saying, okay, is this really something that you want or is this a great idea? businesses that were just great ideas and now you're going to be paying for that great idea because you've invested in it and it's not paying no back no return on investment so i want to encourage you to first tap into where it is in you so you can move forward because once you do that now you can start cultivating now you can look at your environment now you can look at that the people that are around you now you can look at your actions your actions should be driving your business forward when I talked about what happened in 2014, it was a conversation that I had with someone who invited me to do a short little speaking fee, speaking uh, uh, engagement. I did a small speaking engagement, and then they called me back that very day and said, hey, I have another thing that I want you to do tomorrow. Can you be in this city tomorrow? And I said, sure, I could be in that city tomorrow. I cleared my calendar, and I was at that event. I spoke again. Then that night, I received a text message and an email from, the, the, uh, the, from his assistant who said, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it to this third place. Could you go to that place and participate with the same message that you gave the last two days? And this was talking about businesses and how you need to understand the four things of personal wealth. And if you're ever interested in that, just write that down somewhere and ask me about it. And I'll send you a, a free uh, intro to that. Okay. But the four things of personal wealth into a person from what's called WIN seminars to say to me, hey, we have wealth increase now and we want you to be on our panel and could you do a 40 minute presentation? So I did the 40 minute presentation and today I'm currently deciding with them the next one. 
So one thing can lead to a catalyst, could be the catalyst to many things. But it starts with your belief in who you are and what you have. And do you see the value in your hand? Because if you don't have the value with you, then you're not going to give it the time and the attention that it needs. And you're going to be scattered all over the place instead of focus. And you want to have list so you can get what you said you want. Because here's the thing. Once you start working on this thing and it starts taking off, the momentum is going to push you into your greatness. And when it starts pushing you into greatness, you're going to find yourself in all kinds of places and forums. And the next thing you know, you're at this trade show, that trade show, you're giving away. And here's another thing, just a key uh, from my message here. Give some stuff away. Someone has taught us that we should make everybody pay for everything. No, I can tell you this. I spoke free to one event, but then other people invited me to another event who were willing to pay. So I want to challenge you. Are you giving away some of your tea? Are you giving away, are you giving away some of your purses, your pocketbooks, your, uh, your defense mechanism, all the stuff that you're involved in? Are you giving any of it away? And you can give it away in a way that you get a tax break for it so you're not losing. But anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about in that, that segment. So, um, you know, I, I, I'll talk all night. <laughs> Because you're such a loaded speaker, but you're an organized loaded speaker, so that they give you, you get, you know, so much information and so much to follow up with you on. I think that's good. You know, the note taking and the meat and the potatoes, and they want more. Is what you're all about. Tell them how they can reach you, and then I want to open up the call for questions. All right. So meat and potatoes is all I'm about. I'm giving out just nuggets because when I go somewhere to eat, I want to eat a whole. I go and I. Uh, dessert first. Sometimes I want to eat my whole meal and I just kind of sit back and then I wait a few minutes and then I'll get me a little bit of something else. Sometimes all I want is a salad. So I come to you in a way that because I have been given this blessing of a lot of different things over a lot of different times and different all kind of audiences. I've worked with uh, elderly people. I've worked with baby boomers who had just started the, the generation X, the Y, and the Z. I'm a, a late, of, I'm on the end of the spectrum for baby boomers, so I know about turning 50 and not knowing how you're going to retire. Because if you don't know that you need one point something million dollars in the reserve to live at your lifestyle of 50,000 or above, you're going to have problems when you turn 50 and 60. And I don't want anybody saying welcome to Walmart unless they really, really want to. Okay, so here's how you get in touch with me. The best way is a text, 757-236-8207. Send me a text. That's my phone number. Call me, 757-236-8207. Now, do me a favor. When you call me, have a question about what's going on with your business because people get my number and then they start calling me trying to offer me businesses. I'm not interested in that because I am a business owner and I'm okay with what I have. Now, if you just want to share knowledge with me, the missing in my life that I need, that's cool. But don't get offended when I say I'm not interested or no, because I'm very candid and very open about that. All right. But also what I want you to do is I want you to go to that Facebook page. I am dot Dwayne Ross. I am dot D-W-A-Y-N-E. And chat it up. Comment, leave a comment, all right? And then you can reach me by going to my website, www.dwayneross.com. That's right, I own my name on the internet. That's very important. If you own yourself, then it doesn't matter because if people get you, they get everything attached to you. I think I said that earlier, all right? So go to dwayneross.com, D-W-A-Y-N-E-R-O-S-S, Com. Now, by trade, I'm a human service trainer. I train people who have what they call at-risk populations to change their mindset so they can go out and have a better life. But in doing so, I, I, I found that there are other people, churches, civic organizations, women's organizations. Uh, you'll see that I'm actually going to be speaking at the Women of Greatness Conference. Uh, Vicki Yohi will be singing there. I'm doing that in March. All right. Uh, this month, I'm at the Writer's Workshop. You'll check that out with Erica Ward, but look for that information. Just go to my Facebook page 
and scroll down and see some of the stuff that I'm connected to. And if you're interested in it, just instant message me or send me a message right from Facebook. That's the best way. And that way it's an authentic connection. And then of course, send me your requests so that we can get together. And do me a favor on this. If you're gonna post information about your business, make sure you put your return information there so people can connect back to you and they don't have to go through me. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people make a mistake on, all right? Make sure your links are there. Make sure they know how to get in touch with you if they're interested in whatever it is that you post on this on the site. And of course, I don't accept any negativity on my site. If you send negativity stuff, I'll exit out. But I hate you. And, and Leslie, I just want to say, again, this is a short look you over Facebook, and now I'm talking to the world on behalf of I know, the trade show. All over, right? It's amazing. I know. What I want to do is open up the call for any questions real quick um, that people have for you. You touched on so many different things um, from just making sure that you have your mind right and your intent. Yes. And your motive right. Your um, motive. You put your business out there, the way to bring it back home and, and profitability and, and making sure that you have some goals and, you know, and all of that wonderful stuff. We we'll make sure that we open up the call for any questions before we let you go. Uh, to our listeners, if you hit star six, Anything that you want, um, Dwayne, to repeat, but it's Dwayne, to you have the floor. Anybody have a question, comment, or concern? And tell me what kind of business it is that you're doing. That way, I kind of have an idea of what you, what you're doing, what you're trying to do, what your aspirations yeah. are. That way, he can cater the response. Anybody, you hit star six on your phone that are unmuted. Show on. No questions, no questions. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to give a free download to whoever can go ahead and ask at least one question. I think there should be at least one question out there from somebody that's listening to this. So go ahead and star six and ask me a question and or make a comment. And then I'll go ahead and send you a digital download. Well, you put it out there, Dwayne. So what we'll do is I'll make sure that people can link up with you, though, on Facebook. I don't want to hold you too much longer. Um, I think that probably just marinating on the information. I know we have some connection issues. You are kind of fading in and out. So I want to make sure that people can get back and roped back into you. I think you are on the Facebook page, though, yes. for the event. So please, please feel free to post, you know, throughout the night on there as far as how people can link with you. And, and I agree, you know, make sure that you're reaching out, guys, to our speakers tonight for all the right reasons. Um, you know, have critical thinking questions. When you come to them, you know, their time is very valuable and we appreciate them for being a part. But in your reach out, please make sure that you're strategic. So, Dwayne, thank you so much for your time tonight. I so appreciate you for doing this with me. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Whatever you have coming up, of course, you know, I told you I want to get on the agenda and uh, we're going to do some other things. I, I experienced something this weekend that I really want to sit down with you and share with you an idea that I actually wrote out. I'm not going to talk about it on this this call, but I think it will benefit all the people you're connected to, and it'll be something that is valuable. It will move their businesses to the next dimension and actually right. give them a way that they can expand their network. So I really appreciate it because if you would expand your network, then you can expand your net worth. Hey, this is Dwayne Ross. I thank you very much for uh, having an opportunity. Remember, you can turn your passion and your pain into profit. All you got to do is know how to get your gift, talent, and ability out there. And don't settle for the crumbs. No more crumbs from the table. And if you're interested in the book, let me know so I can get you a copy. Thank you very much, Leslie. Thank you, everybody. And hey, we'll see you on the next post. Awesome. Have a good night, everybody. Keep posting. A virtual trade show to finish up. So we'll finish up tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us on Facebook. Send your friends there. Let's keep shopping. Let's keep supporting and loving one another. Have a good night. All right. All right. So this is the book, No More Cross from the Table. Again, you can get it at DwayneRoss.com. It's also on Amazon.com. And Kindle, you can download it for free. I mean, it's really, uh, you know, because Kindle allows you to do Kindle uh, Prime. 
you can download it, check it out. You don't have to even purchase it because you already have the Kindle Prime. But I, I want to kind of touch base on two things that I said earlier about cultivating. See, cultivating means that you're going to you're going to make sure that your environment is connected to what it is that you want your environment is is set up in a way that you're successful a lot of people don't want to set their environment up they think that they can do business any and any kind of way and you can't you cannot do that because number one what does your walls say to you you know are they speaking back to you you know i have something that i took off the wall i wanted to show it, it's kind of like show and tell but anyway it's an affirmation and uh, it's across the room. So I took it off the wall so that I could share with you. But what it is, is actually for myself, where I said, you know, I am, and then I put, you know, a descriptive word, easily, okay? I am easily making uh, over $500,000 a year in my online and uh, on our, our online businesses. And so um, that right there gives me something to shoot for. $500,000. Now, am I going out saying, hey, give me $500,000? No. But what I am doing is I've already put it in my mindset so that my mind opportunities that come that could potentially bring me that particular number. So when you look at an affirmation, you look at a goal, you want to set it up in a way as if it's already happening. You want to act as if it's already there. So I am is a definitive. There's no pow more powerful words, two words put together than I am. When you I am, you declaring. So when you declare a thing, it should be established. So all you have to do is establish it. Okay. So I am, and then you put a, a descriptive effortlessly, I'm easily. All right. You put that word in there to help your body understand and your mind and your physiology link up with you. Because if you're like, hey, it's hard, it's terrible, oh, it's hard. Well, you don't want it like that. You want to make it simple, easy, something you can recall, easy, all right? So I'm effortlessly, I'm easily, okay? And then what are you doing? I'm making or generating over $500,000. Now your brain knows what to look for because you know your brain can work just as hard on a lie than it is on the truth, than it can on the truth. So you want to set it up to where it's working hard for you. So you put your brain to work. It's going to look for ideas and opportunities. Now, you might have a book idea, and that book is probably maybe only going to bring you, I don't know, $9.99, $10.99, in this case, uh, $15.99 or $20. And that's really cool. But what happens with the speaking fees from this book? Well, that can be anywhere from $300 to $3,500, depending. I've spoken at, um, as a keynote speaker, $3,500. So the same little, little I generate $3,500. My um, coaching fees, all right? I'm co coaching people now, and that's an hourly rate, okay, $7. But of course, it's a discount that to people. So if you get two or three friends and you all go through the whole month, month of um, coaching, then it breaks it down to just a little bit of money. So you have a way to participate in that $500,000 that you're looking for, but your brain will figure out different ways. Maybe I might find a piece of property that I can invest in. And from uh, real estate investing, it brings me to another place where maybe that would be generated $200,000, $300,000. But who knows? That could be the $500,000. I don't know the how. Just like Jack Canfield said in Chicken Soup for the Soul, the how will show up. You commit to the why, the how will show up. So anyway, I just want to just encourage you guys. This was a little bit of chatting after the fact. also want to tell you about something else that I'm involved in. I'm on the radio every second Sunday of the month in Washington, D.C. You can hear it live at Listen, live, Listen, Vision, Live, okay? Listen, Vision, Live.com. I actually he came on this Sunday right after Mr. Lesko. You remember Mr. Lesko with all the uh, question marks and everything, helping people with grants? People think he's gone. He's not gone. He's on the radio and he's on the internet and he's still making thousands and thousands of dollars selling the same bulk of books on how to get taxes, how to save on taxes and get grants and things from the um, uh, 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 out there for government grants. And I came on right after his show this Sunday. Okay, second Sunday of the month on WLVS Radio. 
all right wlvs radio if you're on facebook just put in wlvs radio and you'll see it in dc it's awesome it's part of the mentor mentor me uh Mem mentor me memorable moments which is uh, a whole nother program where uh, um my duncan host and i'm a co-host on that show and it's pretty awesome you can go to mentor me 411.com that's mentor m-e-n-t-o-r me m-e 411.com and you can see my information there and connect with tracy as well but anyway i hope to see you another place in another space we live and i look forward to hearing you and thank you for taking time out to spend time with me again i'm Dwayne ross the author of the book no more crumbs from the table and you can find it on amazon.com or you can download it right there at my website dwayneross.com d-w-a-y-n-e-r-o-s-s.com and i'll see you on the next post god bless you and remember joshua 1 8 this book of the law should not depart out of my mouth, but I should meditate on it day and night. Observe to do everything that's written therein, for then I will make my way prosperous, and I shall have good success. God bless you, and we'll see you on the next post.